And again and again and again. Israel be at peace, they're mixed with the mix of the enemy, marry into the enemy. They're not being persecuted, they cry to God for help, God to raise up a judge, liberate Israel, and over and over again. And look at one judge here. In chapter 6. The start of chapter 6, just for the sake of time. It says that Israel, whenever they grew things, whenever they grew a crop or, or they harvested, it says these Midianites will come against them and they'll take all their crop. They destroy it all. They smash them up. And I need glasses. Verse 11, chapter 6. Now the angel of the Lord sat under a temperance tree, which is in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abazite, while his son Gideon, fresh wheat in a wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor, the great and mighty warrior, basically. And Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord's with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the miracles that our fathers told us about? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go on, go in this might of yours. You shall serve Israel, you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Then he said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weak, weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. Let's pray. Now pray for me, pray for yourselves, and pray God would speak to us, eh? Father God, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your word, my God. I pray for your brothers and your sisters here tonight, God. Even the ones who may not know you. Last one, you bless each one of us, Lord. In Jesus' name. It starts off, as I said, this is the time when Israel was in. It says, I'll read it to you. Gideon, fresh wheat in a wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Now that might be something we might not know a lot about. It's definitely something I don't know a lot about. I've never fresh wheat in my life. <laughs> something you might have, I don't know. But what you used to do is, if you, if you harvested your field, you'd go your wheat in a pile, you'd get it with a pitchfork, you'd throw it up in the air, the wind was supposed to come along, and it'd blow the chaff away, then all your grain would land in a pile. That's what you do, you chuck it in the air, the wind would blow the rubbish away, and what you was harvesting would fall at your feet. And to do that, you'd have to usually be on a, on a higher place where there's a lot of wind. It says Gideon was doing it in a wine press. If you want to look what a wine press is, nine times out of ten, it's someone that's even covered up. It had sides around it, it was even covered up. So, rather than, so where Gideon is, rather than the wind blowing it away, if you're chucking your wheat in the air in a wine press, it'd come down on top of you, you'd probably look like a scarecrow. It says he done it out of fear from the Midianites. What he done was not the thing you would do. Where he was doing it was not the place it would be done. To fresh, fresh wheat, you'd do, you'd do it in a, on a high place where the wind would catch the, and blow the rubbish away. But it says Gideon is doing it in a wine press. And this could have been Gideon's day to day. This is Gideon, Gideon's everyday thing. We see a man here, unable to do the job that he's called to do because of fear. We have a man here, he's unable to do the job that he's called to do out of fear. That was his day to day. He was hiding from the Midianites. And even his fear affected him in his service to God. We see he goes on, he says, you know, you've been called to, to liberate Israel. And he goes, how can I do it? He said, my, my, he said, my family's the least of, of Manasseh. He said, I'm the least in my family. He, he's not talking himself down, isn't he? Imagine him, God's come to him, he's the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And he come to him, and he's covered in all this, like a scarecrow. And he says, you mighty man of valor. God calls him a mighty warrior. There he is, trash death in the wine press. 
He says, how can I go? He said, my family are the worst ones, the littlest ones, the weakest ones, the most cowardice ones, and I'm the most cowardice one in my entire family. I don't know, I think, who's, who's sick of the word? COVID. Amen. <laughs> who's sick of the talk of it? God, listen, that's terrible. People are still getting this illness. I'm not, I'm not going to try and make a little of it. But it's the same we've had. For, it can affect us. Christians, out of fear, unable to do the work that God has called them to do, or unable to do it properly out of fear. What might happen? What might not happen? Who are they being told who's against them? Who's going to be coming? Who ain't going to be coming? What might happen? What might not happen? And out of fear, you end up surviving, running, living the life in the way God's called you to do it. You end up in the way like a scarecrow. But God's calling you to something else. God's calling you to something else. Now, some fears are rational, some fears are irrational. I don't want, I don't want a headache, let alone COVID. I don't want nothing bad to happen to me. I don't want nothing bad to happen to you. But Christian, to live our lives in constant fear is not the way God wants us to live. It's not the way God wants us to live. Just talking about this one thing, we're, we're, we're coming out of the so-called lockdown, all the other business, social distancing, all these other things we've been told to do. And it's affected people, you know. It's affected people mentally. You know, we, I don't know about you, thank God that church is busy in Dartford, but we lost a lot of people during lockdown. It, it, it put them in a way that, I, I don't know where they stood with the Lord, I don't know. But people was a regular in church for years. We had a bit of lockdown and, and, and a bit of fear crept in and we don't see them. If we've done a Zoom meeting, they'll be the first ones on it. Fear and faith are not friends. You have fear and you have faith. And they don't get along. In fact, they're the complete opposite from one another. In fact, one counsels the other one out. You can have faith, fear creeps in. Just look at um, Elijah, Mount Carmel, all the prophets of Baal. He had them put to death. Call, fill, fill, fill the valley up, a trench full of water. Call down a fire from heaven. Burn it up, then had them all kill. Put the faith. Jezebel comes along. I'm having him killed. Fear. <laughs> one counsels the other one out. And I pray to God, this is just something I've been looking at, and it applies to no one in this tent. Just me. In which case, I've got 100 people to pray for me. But sadly, I know that's not the case. There's a good chance that's not the case. So many Christians living in fear of what might happen, what might not happen, what could happen, what couldn't happen, if, but, maybe. We're not to live that way. The Bible says we walk, we live by faith and not by sight. And I'm not trying to sell some money out of faith. I promise you I'm not. Spend some time with me. I'm not. I've got fears. I've got worries. So as my faith gets very thin. <laughs> so, so, sometimes I, have to, I think afterwards, dear Lord, practice what you preach. But the Bible says we live, walk by faith and not by sight. Who here can say they've given their lives to the Lord? Can I show of hands? If you've given your life to Christ, you've got a tent full of unsaved people. Okay, we preach the gospel. Yeah, you've given your life to Christ, you know what that means? You belong to Him. You belong to Him. And you know when you belong to Him, the Bible says, we, 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 we become a child of God. And I'm not preaching about prosperity. I'm not preaching about it. I don't know what you... You know, someone coming in the other day, I want to give you life to the Lord, I want a better life. Well, that might not happen. You might give your life to the Lord and say, terrible happened to you. I've got the apostles. He will save you. <laughs> but when we give our lives to the Lord, we become his problem. When we give our lives to the Lord, we become his problem. Those of you who've got children, <laughs> it's not a nice thing to call them problems, but they're your responsibility. They're your problem. They, they, they're for you to deal with. They're for you to provide for and look after. When we become the child of God, we become his problem. Do you, do, you, do you believe that God's big enough to deal and look after you? 
Do you really? Because yeah. I'll tell you what I say, amen, when I get asked that question. Sometimes in the way I live my life, it's not true. Sometimes I live like it ain't true. Because only takes a bad phone call or a letter to come through the letterbox or hear something. You go, oh, no. End of. That's me. I know you're good, and I know you're good God. I know you love me, God. And well, can, you deal, can you deal with this one? Fear and faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. That means regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what we see, regardless of what we know, regardless of what we hear, regardless of what's going on around us, what's tangible, things we can see, touch, and we know it's there, we, we can put all that to one side and we live for what we know to be true. To walk by faith and not by sight. And I, once again, I'm not, I'm not saying I've got this sewn up, do what I'm doing. I need to be like this. And I know so many brothers and sisters, I really speak for where I'm at. Bound up by fear. I can't go here, I can't go there. This might happen, that might happen. I can't go there because so and so's happening over there. And just bound up in fear. Jesus come to um, Gideon. He called him a mighty man of valor. He wasn't a mighty man of valor, was he? He was trash to death, hiding in the wine press. I'm going to give myself Lord. I'm staying here. You see, you mighty man of valor. You know, the point is, God doesn't see you as a current situation. He knows what you can be in him. If he's called you to something, if he's got a, plan, a purpose and a plan, no, no, I'm sure we all know he has for our lives. He knows what you can be in him. He knows what he can do through you. Afterwards, just start to read through this in your own personal reading. Start to read through chapter 6 and 7. It talks about the life of Gideon and the things that he did, that God did through him, if you like. But it all, come, it all started with him stepping out of that wine press. It all started with him taking, leaving fear behind and starting to walk by faith. You know, as we know, read through the book of Hebrews, without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We have to live by faith. You know, sometimes, I know, I'm not going to brand below because I, I, I want us to have a time of worship and I've got to move. I'm sick of my own voice. Amen. But so many people listen to other voices. Well, what we, what we, what we mama think, what we dad would think, what we auntie would think, what we uncle would think, what we granny would think, what we grandfather would think. I've been brought up to believe this, I've been brought up to believe that. I'm from this breed, I'm English, I'm Irish, I'm Scotch, I'm Welsh. I'm of Christ. Amen. I'm of Christ. Oh, well, my people, my, my people believe this. My people believe that. And, and, and my dad don't agree with this. And if my people walk by faith, not by sight. My people walk up to the walls of Jericho, walk around it for six days, and then blow a poverty trumpet, and the walls come down. My people walk up to a sea and hold out a staff, and by faith, God opens it up, and they walk through. Amen. My people open prison doors. My breed gave his only begotten son to bleed and die upon a cross for me. My breed, my people, love you unconditionally and died for you so that you can have eternal life with you. That's the, the, that's the breed I am now. Yes, I'm a gypsy man. Yes, I'm this. Yes, I'm that. Uh, yes, I've got a family. But I belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and, the, and the life that he calls me is to be completely in opposite to the way I've been brought up to be. Walking by sight, and that's where fear comes in. And we just walk by faith. In the Gospels, one of my favourite stories. For sake of time, I'm going to go. Jesus said, do you believe? He said, yes, Lord, I believe. But help me in my unbelief. <laughs> yeah, I believe, yeah, I know. But even with the bits I don't believe, help me with that. Perhaps there's a lot of people like that. I'm not that a lot of the time. You've got to know you're good. You've got to know you love me. You've got to know you're saved. I know you're right. But all the other things I've got doubts have helped me with them too. Perhaps you're like that as well. You're in good company. There's people in the Bible like it. And Jesus can also help. Let's start to pray. Let's pray that we be a people who walk by faith and not by sight. Lay fear aside. And put some faith in God. Amen. Let's start to pray, church.